first and ten high school football on BPW Channel 13. This year, the Winnipeg High School Football League celebrates its 50th anniversary, and we encourage you to lend your support by attending the game. A reunion, a player of the decade contest, and 11 well-matched teams make all the ingredients for a landmark year. with his guest, Ed Ullman. It's high school football on First and Ten. Hi, everybody. This is Shelley Oster along with Ed Ulmer here at the Velodrome. The first game this evening will feature the Kelvin Clippers against the Daniel McIntyre Club. And we're looking for an exciting football game, Ed. Uh, the teams are just lining up now on the football field. And uh, here are the, the referees. Our head referee is Gary Slobodian. The line umpire is Tony Kerr. Back umpire, Ken Thompson. Steve Uranus and Bob Madams. Those are the referees for this evening's football game. And to start the game off, the Daniel Mac Maroons will be kicking off to the Calvin Clippers. Just a number, I want to turn and then I'm looking for an exciting football game. Uh, both these clubs, uh, you know, have, have been playing good football, and uh, we'll have to exactly see what happens today. So uh, the game is just ready to start, and I guess uh, it being called this year in meters is a little bit uh, strange for the first little while, but uh, we'll, I'm sure, move along with it as, it goes, as the game goes along. Fletcher returning that kickoff for the Kelvin Clippers. So it'll be first and 10. The ball on the 30 meter, meter line. Make that the 31. So it'll be first and 10. You'll have to forgive me if I uh, keep repeating it in, uh, in yards, yards yeah. instead of meters. <laughs> And the starting quarterback is Rob Sedell. Wears sweater number 12. Standard formation flankers right and left. Anderson, the ball Pitch out to Anderson around the right side. And there's a flag on the play as Anderson has himself about a six yard gain. It'll be, it'll be second and fourth. Well, I think what they had here was a uh, strong formation rate with a quick pitch with uh, a lot of blockers out front. And the uh, running back made a good move there, but someone uh, grabbed the face mask on the way down. So that attack on a few extra yards. Sullivan, and he picked up 10 yards, Ed, so it's or 10 meters rather, so it's first and 10. Yeah. And with that penalty charged against the Daniel Mac Maroons, the ball moves down to about the 45 meter line of the Daniel Mac Maroons. So it's first and 10, I formations, flank and flankers right and left. Sedell straight back to pass and hands it up right in the middle on a beautiful uh, fake there, Ed. Uh, straight up the middle to, um, to number 38, Chris uh, Halady, and we'll have a look at that, Ed. Okay, what it was was a little fake here, uh, delayed draw. And the back picks a nice, uh, makes a nice move there at the line of scrimmage, picks his hole and picks up a good gainer. And he had about seven meters on the play. So it's second down, three meters to go. High formation once again with flankers right and left. No score here in the first quarter at the Velodrome. Shelley Osser along with Ed Ulmer. Anderson the ball carry. Anderson the ball carry once again up the right side and he'll be very close to a first down. 
Oh, I think he'd be a little short here. It was an off, off tackle play to the right here, and the uh, defensive end and the backer, uh, defensive back came up and shut it down uh, pretty good there. So they are about a uh, yard and a half short of first down. So it's third down. One meter and a half to go. And the ball is on the 36. Kelvin looking to repeat their victory as they defeated Gordon Bell last week, and but that remains to be seen. Third down, one meter to go. Anderson back to pass, puts it out, and it's uh, incomplete as it was intended for Roger Fletcher. Actually, it was a good call there, Shelley. Uh, it was a pitch back to the halfback, fake uh, run with a pass, and the receiver was wide open, but uh, the uh, halfback uh, just didn't get the ball out there far enough. The play was open itself. So it's um, first down for the Daniel Mac Maroons as the Calvin Clippers fail to get a first down and Fraser Merzak goes to work for the Daniel Mac Maroons. Where's sweater number 11? Zoe the ball carrier. Zoe the ball carrier straight up the middle. About an eight meter gain. But we have a flag on the play. Well, I think there was illegal procedure on uh, uh, Daniel Mack there. Someone on the line moved just before the snap of the ball. And the referee is, of course, explaining to the defensive captain uh, the options and that the will come back. So it will be first down and 15 meters to go. Legal procedure charged against the Maroons. First down and so it'll be first and 15 as Fraser Merzak, third year veteran, second year starting quarterback of the Daniel Mac Maroons. Ideal passing situation here, Ed. Yes, I uh, think uh, Kelvin should be ready for it. They know that they have to pick up 15 yards here, so they'll probably be passing and they fooled us oh, all and they run it off tackle. And handed off to Zoe up the right side and uh, Zoe uh, picked himself up about uh, Six meters. Okay, we got it on the replay here. It's just a straight uh, handoff off tackle. The uh, offensive line blows uh, the defensive line off, and he picks up a good guy. Now. There's yesterday's results uh, in the high school football league. Uh, Churchill defeated uh, the Maples uh, 31. I can't uh, see the on our monitor here, Ed. I can't make out what uh, Churchill defeated Maples, but they did. And St. Paul's uh, uh, defeated Elmwood, and. And Sisler over Grand Park, and uh, those were the scores, or not the scores, but the uh, games last night in the high school football league. That was and uh, Daniel McMaroon's on a nice play around the left side there, Ed. Yeah, you know, uh, it was an excellent play by number 42. He came up and he shut it down real quick and held it to a very short gain. Here you see the motion uh, coming to the left. And uh, the backs also will lead out there, but uh, number 42 comes up and shuts it down for a short gain, and they have to punt now. So it's third down, and a punting situation for the Daniel Mac Maroons. As Walter Birds goes back to handle a punting charge. There it is. A lady picks up the. A lady returning this punt for the. Calvin Clippers, and he's buried very quickly by a wave of maroon tacklers. So it's first and ten for the Calvin Clippers. The first down ten for the Clippers. Ball at the 32. Ball is marked on about the 32 meter line. First and ten for the Calvin Clippers. No score here in the first quarter from the velodrome. Shelley Ostrov along with Ed Ulmer. And we'll be able to get the standings for you a little later as we Move along throughout the game. I formation, flankers right and left once again. Anderson the ball carrier. Anderson the ball carrier around the left side. Short so, game for the, uh, the Clippers and uh, both teams, uh, Ed, don't seem to be able to move the ball in, uh, in long marches right now anyways. Well, no, it's uh, the first part of the game too and everybody's feeling uh, each other out here. Uh, 
they haven't gone to the air too much. They're uh, running more uh, mainly sweeps and uh, quick dives, but I think it'll open up a little later. So the ball is on the 36 meter line. And it's second and four. And the pass intended for Anderson went astray. And it'll be third down, five meters to go, kicking situation for the Calvin Clippers. So it's third down, kicking situation for the Calvin Clippers. Have you noticed anything out there different uh, at it all? Or are they basically playing the standard defensive lines and uh, not doing anything uh, different out there? Any stunting at all out there? No, there's nothing uh, different going on right now other than on the last uh, oh, excellent nice kick. kick from the... Petronio taking that uh, kick uh, for the uh, Daniel Macaroons. And uh, Ed, that was a fine kick uh, by the uh, Calvin Clippers kicker. He really uh, put his foot into that one. Yeah, he uh, got off a nice kick there, nice and uh, long. And uh, although the young, he could have had a little more height on it, I'm not knocking the kick, but uh, they made a good return for him. But he got an excellent punt off there. I guess you like to punt as high as you can, Ed, and try to get some hang time so your uh, lineman can get down there and make the tackles very quickly. Well, the hang time is, is very important uh, in uh, not only high school, but in college and professional ball. You need that hang time so that it can be covered. So it's first and ten for the Maroons. Fraser Merzak at quarterback. Hands off to Zoe straight up the middle where he's stopped uh, by uh, a gang of tacklers by the uh, Kelvin Clippers. And Zoe has himself about a, uh, giving him about a five, six yard gain, six meter second gain down, rather. So it's three Ball meters, second down, three meters to go. Both these clubs' records right now are one and one at this point. So uh, a win here today is very important for both these uh, football clubs. Little mix up in the backfield there, and I don't believe the ball carrier got to the line of scrimmage. Or will be very close to it. So we're looking at about a third down and about two meters to go. We'll take a look ahead and see what, uh, what really went wrong there. Well, I think it was uh, supposed to be a little misdirection uh, off uh, off the guard there, but the uh, number by number 32, but uh, number 51 there. Uh, made a, an excellent play and fought off the block and made the tackle. So it's third down and they're gambling. Danny Mac runes are straight up the middle. Keeps the ball keeps the ball the as quarterback Danny Fraser Danny Merzak uh, keeps the ball on a quarterback sneak and uh, gets a drive going and kept alive by the Daniel Mac Maroons. So Martin Fraser Martin Merzak Martin taking the ball and just uh, following his center there at Okay, all of this is a simple uh, quarterback uh, sneak, but his uh, lineman did a good job. They got down low and they blew off uh, the Kelvin defense and he was able to pick up a good game. So the ball is on the 49 meter line. First and 10. And Fraser Herzak laid that one out there, Ed. I think the uh, runner just had to run out of that one. It could have been six points. Well, I, I think the problem was that the runner put his hands up a little too quick uh, instead of running full out until you get a catch up with the ball or get underneath the ball. Uh, this is a, a lack of uh, experience, but uh, I think that pass could have been caught. There's a shot of the uh, crowd filling in slowly here at the velodrome. And Ed, that's a good point. Uh, if you're a pass receiver and uh, you are running for a pass, uh, your best bet is to keep the hands down, run straight out, and then as the ball comes in, bring your hands up. That's right, because you lose speed when you have your hands in the air. Plus, you also... And there's a nice shot from Giyu. He may be going all the way as he took the pass from Fraser Merzak. And right into the end zone for the touchdown. I'd like to show that one again as uh, Fraser Merzak just laid it out there, and uh, Giyu... Uh, went the distance for the touchdown, Ed. Well, it was an uh, excellent uh, call at the right time. He just a little swing pass out. Uh, he lays the ball up, but number 76. Uh, um, sorry, I don't have his name. 
right in front of her. Number 76 made just an excellent block down around the uh, five or 10 yard line, and that caused the play to go all the way. So Giyu scoring the first touchdown for the Daniel Mac Maroons, putting them ahead 6-0. Here's the point after, and it's good. So the score is the Daniel Mac Maroons 7, and the Kelvin Clippers no score. And I'll tell you, Ed, that uh, Giyu, uh, he has a lot of speed, and this is his second year playing uh, high school football for the Daniel Mac Maroons, and uh, showed a lot of speed on after taking that pass. Yeah, he showed a lot of speed. He also uh, showed uh, confidence, and he waited until his uh, Ian's Ian's was a uh, fellow that made the block, but he waited until he threw the block to make his cut. So that's a sign of a good back, and uh, especially at an early age like this. And the Daniel Mac Maroons will be kicking off. Number 64, Walter Birds, all-star, lineman and punter last year. He, they list him as a defensive end, an offensive tackle, and the punter. So there's a gentleman who has a lot of positions to fill for the Daniel Mac Maroons. And he'll handle the kickoff chores here. The ball marked on the 45-meter line. Fletcher takes the kick from Birds. Fletcher returning this kick uh, for the Calvin Clippers. That will be first down the Calvin Clippers. The ball is being marked on about the 36 meter line. <laughs> well, they have good field position here. Uh, uh, so they are, they're able to uh, run the ball or pass or whatever they want to do. Their whole playbook is open to them from here. So they're in good shape. And they'll definitely uh, try to get something going as they're trailing in the ball game seven to nothing. And we have two minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Shelley Ostrom along with Ed Almer and the VPW crew here on first and 10 on VPW channel 13. Lady, the ball carrier. The lady, the ball carrier straight up the right side. And he has himself about a five meter Again, here it is, Ed. Okay, here is it, uh, a false pitch and a hand back, and uh, the uh, defensive flow went with uh, the pitch, and which allowed the uh, fellows to open up a nice hole there for a nice game. So it's second down and four meters to go. As the Calvin Clippers try to put something together here, flankers right and left, and they use the I formation and their red sweaters, gray pants. A lot of movement on the line there. Quarterback back the pass, puts it out there to Dangerfield. Wide open. And Dangerfield will be very close to a first down as uh, he took that pass from uh, Steidel and uh, made a nice play on it, Ed. Yeah, it was uh, a screen play. Uh, what the linemen uh, uh, do is they make, uh, the offensive linemen make contact, then let the defensive linemen through and then they drop out to, uh, to make a block there, and it was an excellent play. So it's first and 10 for the Kelvin Clippers. who are on the move, trailing in the ball game, seven to zip. Shelley Ostro, Ed Ulmer here at the Velodrome. Kelvin Clippers, Daniel Mac Maroons. Battle back to pass, puts it out there, completed. Jeff Anderson. Grade 12 student taking that pass and a nice catch. Ed used his hands very well and uh, made a nice gain on that particular play. Yeah, he, uh, again, it was a, a case of where the offensive lineman let the defensive line through and he uh, swing the ball out to the end there. He makes a nice cut back to the inside here to pick up a little extra yards. But the nice thing about that was when he saw that he was gonna get tackled, he headed upfield to get as much yardage out of it as he could. So it's second down, two meters to go. The ball on the 40 yard line. 40 meter line, rather. Lady the ball carrier, who's in first down territory? A lady, the ball carrier, and he has himself a first down as the Calvin Clippers move the yard sticks once again. That's three consecutive first downs, or two rather, and uh, the Calvin Clippers are on the move. Trailing in the ball game, seven to zip. 24 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Ball is on the 36 meter line. Rob Steidel, grade 11 student, back to pass. Another screen once again. A 
And it was almost picked off by an interception, Ed. I thought that uh, number 35, um, uh, Wilson uh, Sleva, played that one very well for the uh, Daniel Macaroons. That's right. Well, they've used that play uh, twice in this series already. They used it to the right, they used it to the left, and they came back with it uh, the third time there, and it was almost picked off. And uh, if they young fella could have got there just a little bit quicker that would have been six points on the scoreboard too. <laughs> went to the well once too often right. so it's second down 10 meters to go <laughs> nice jarring tackle and as uh, Chris Halady couldn't hang on to that Ed, and uh, we'll be able to show this one again a beautiful defensive play yes it was a uh, young man Frampton here uh, number 12 plays it excellent the uh, quarterback drops straight back uh, the receiver does an, a breakout and he times it perfectly and jars the ball to loose. Excellent play. And there's a penalty flag on the play. We'll have to wait for the infraction to be signaled up from uh, head referee, Mr. Slobodian. Rough play charged against the Daniel Mac Maroons. And uh, I didn't see the end of that play, but uh, would the rough play have taken place uh, on the, in somewhere in the line of scrimmage, or was it the tackle? No, it uh, definitely wasn't the tackle because it was a nice, clean uh, hit. Uh, so the uh, rough play had to take care uh, take place either on the interior line or some other back uh, uh, trying to uh, <laughs> take a shot. <laughs> so it's first down for the Calvin Clippers who are on the move. Nice draw. As uh, Todd uh, Harrowwood, uh, grade 11 student, uh, made a nice run on that, and it was a good called play. Yes, that was uh, an excellent play. The quarterback drops, dropped back, simply handed off the, the back uh, Harrowwood. He delayed there. The hole opened up, and he made a couple of nice cuts there. And again, he was headed for the, the goal line. He wasn't running lateral, and that's uh, very important for young kids uh, uh, that are running backs. That when you when you get into when you get into the situation where you have no other place to go, then turn it upfield towards the goal line. So the score at the end of the first quarter: Daniel Mac Maroon seven, and the Kelvin Clippers no score. But hold the phone, Calvin Clippers are on the move and they could tie this game up very quickly the way they're moving that ball at. Yeah, I think they have their momentum going now. They're using a, a good selection of plays and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they score here. Well, the ball is being marked on about the 11 meter line and first and 10. I formation, Steidl is still at quarterback and he'll put it up. Into the end zone, wide open for the touchdown. Number 78 falls into the end zone for a touchdown. Nice play there, Ed. Yes, that was a nice play. Quarterback dropped back. Although the defensive uh, line did have some pressure on him, he uh, just laid it out there and let the receiver uh, run on it. The receiver goes down and he does a breakout, and the quarterback just drops back, lays it up and the receiver runs to the ball. Excellent play. You know, that Steidl throws pretty good running to the left, Ed, and that's uh, the hardest pass to throw. Yes, uh, most quarterbacks will do a much better job running to the right, being right-handed. It is uh, quite difficult to throw when moving to the, uh, the left and throwing on the run. So we got a tied up ball game, Ed, and uh, to join us, uh, we have Bob Whitlaw. Bob, uh, you being the convener, uh, what do you think so far? What's your observations? Well, Kelly, before the game, I just thought if uh, Kelvin can survive the first quarter against Daniel McIntyre, uh, you know, they have a good chance to win the game. I, I think when it comes right down to it, they, you know, definitely on paper, Daniel McIntyre has a better team. But uh, I saw Kelvin play last week. I was very impressed with the quarterback's title and Anderson, the running back. And just watching Kelvin uh, come out and warm up today, I just knew they were ready for the game. And uh, terrific game so far, Shelley. Hey, we may have a real exciting one like we had the first week. Right. And the second week, I understand, uh, I want to thank Don Marks for uh, sitting in uh, for us. And uh, that was another exciting pair of games. Yes, it was. We were very fortunate. And uh, I know Don sure enjoyed doing it, and so did I. And just the enthusiasm shown by all the teams participating again. It's nice to see. Okay, so the Calvin Clippers will now kick off to the Daniel Mac Maroons. And 
think it was Ashley Gay uh, taking that uh, kickoff. Takes the kickoff the back At least that's the number that we thought it was, number uh, number 32. He's a starting defensive back after years of absence. I guess that's who carried the ball. We understand there was Brian Minot taking that uh, kickoff. Uh, correction. So it's first and ten for the Daniel Mac Maroons. The ball on the 42 meter line. Giu, the ball carrier, turns the corner. He stopped up very quickly by the Kelvin Clippers linebacking crew, who were very quick to get across there and make the tackle. So it'll be second and seven yards, seven meters to go. We hope you're enjoying watching this game on VPW Channel 13. Every Sunday morning, two games back to back. First one here, Daniel Mac Maroons and the Kelvin Clippers. Maroon 45. Second down, three meters to go. Power right, Merzak straight back to pass. Puts it out there and it's incomplete as Giu couldn't hang on to that one and he was really rocked it. Yeah, there was a, uh, again, a great timing by the defensive back coming up, but the uh, quarterback also had uh, a lot of pressure on him got through there and he got right out of the pocket and he's running uh, to his right. And uh, I think he would have been short of the first down on that play anyway, but it was an excellent play by the defensive back. Shot of Fraser Merzak heading to the bench. And a kicking situation as Birds will be punting here for the Daniel Mac Maroons. Kicking with the wind here in the second quarter. It's a fine punt away. Anderson takes the punt from Birds. Returned by Anderson. Anderson looking for some running room and finds it straight up the middle. And it'll be first and 10 for the Calvin Clippers. Tied up all game, seven all here in the second quarter at the Velodrome. Shelly Ostro, the next Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Ed Almer. So it's first down for the Calvin Clippers. The ball on the 35. And the last time, of course, the Calvin Clippers had the ball. They marched in for a touchdown. See if they can do it again. I formation. Flankers right and left. Steidel at quarterback. Calls out the signals. Hands it off to his big back, Chris Alady. As Chris goes straight up the left side. A simple uh, off tackle play, but Alady is uh, running with a lot of authority now, and uh, I can see the uh, momentum of this game is uh, switching towards Kelly now. The Maroons better get together here. That's right. I'll tell you that Alady is a big back. All backs in motion going to the right. So he's got power right, comes back uh, with uh, a Anderson lady with Anderson once again. Has number 30, Jeff Anderson. What kind of play would you call that, Ed? Uh, directional play? Well, it's a, a misdirection draw. The uh, back simply sits over in his uh, halfback spots there, and the quarterback takes the ball to him, hoping that the flow will all run the other way and he can cut back against the grain. Well, the Kelvin Clippers were charged for holding, as you saw the referee give that indication. So it'll be second and 14 meters to go. He's got to put it up here, Ed. What's the well, best? Well, the last time <laughs> I said that uh, they ran the ball, so. Well. But I think uh, since all the backs are out of the back, you'll be putting it up. We're pretty safe here. Puts it up, and it's completed to Jeff Anderson. And Anderson has a very short gain, so the Calvin Clippers will probably be punting this one away. Steinle doesn't seem to be uh, one bit afraid of throwing the ball at and that's good to see. Oh no, uh, I think he's got a lot of confidence in him and uh, that's probably due to his teammates and his coaching and uh, he's uh, willing to put the ball up. And again, that was an excellent play by uh, Frampton there, number 12, who came up and uh, shut it down for a very short gainer. A fine punt, you talk about hang time, he had lots of it there. 
Gio returning that punt for the Daniel Mac Maroons. And they'll spot the ball on about the 45 meter line. And uh, took that one right on the run, Ed. There's a shot of the cr crowd here piling into the velodrome. And uh, unfortunately, we'd like to show that one again, Ed. But he took that uh, that punt right on the dead run and uh, made a nice return on it. Well, he took it on the, on the dead run. Uh, plus, uh, Kelvin, the outside uh, in on uh, the left side, uh, that didn't have containment on there. Uh, he pinched in too, too tight, and the uh, ball carrier got around him, and he picked up a nice gainer there. Well, the Kelvin Clippers were charged uh, with rough play, Ed, and uh, it uh, definitely gives the Danny Mac Maroons a great uh, field position as the ball is on the 26-meter uh, line, and you talk about uh, momentum. It just may have uh, left the Kelvin Clippers and uh, <laughs> gone over to the, uh, the Maroons. Well, we'll see how uh, Kelvin's defense holds up on this drive here. If they can stop him. Zola, the ball carrier. And there's Zola, the ball carrier, and uh, he's running uh, like a man that uh, wants to head to that end zone, Ed. No, I think both, uh, both teams uh, seem to have their running game going uh, fairly well so far here. Uh, I imagine that the coaches will be making some adjustments at halftime to shut down some of that running game. Well, he almost picked up uh, 10 meters. He picked up nine and a half, and uh, he was stopped by uh, Levesque uh, of the uh, Calvin Clippers. So it's second and about a half a meter to go. And Fraser Merzak on a quarterback sneak straight up the middle following his uh, offensive guard. And he will have a first down for the Daniel Mac Maroons. And the ball is being marked on about the 17 meter line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Daniel Mac Maroons. We're all tied up here in the first half. The time is 6.43 remaining in the first half. Seven up as the Maroons and the Calvin Clippers do battle here in the first game at the Velodrome. Merzak uh, keeping the ball. Uh, I think there was a little mix up in the backfield there, Ed. Yeah, definitely. That wasn't a design play. Uh, he turned the hand off to the halfback, and the halfback was already by. But he did do the, uh, the smart thing here. Uh, instead of trying to uh, force the ball in there, he kept it. And he took the, uh, the uh, small gain on there, but it's better than uh, chancing a fumble on the play. Smart play by the quarterback. So it's second down, nine and a half meters to go. By 56 remaining in the first half. Merzak straight back to pass, puts it out there. Could be for six, and it is. As number 24, Chris Kattegay, as he's in the end zone for the touchdown. Nice block to make the touchdown there, Ed. Yeah, uh, what it was is a slight roll to the left with a uh, halfback coming out of, the, out of the, swinging out of the backfield out into the flat there. Nice pass, and uh, we get a good block down on about the five-yard line. He goes in easily. So Chris Cataway into the end zone for the Daniel Mac Maroons. Puts them ahead 13-7 to with 5.47 remaining in the first half. And here's the point after attempt. And it's no good, so the score remains. The Daniel Mac Maroons 13, the Kelvin Clippers 7, and we have 5. 47 to go in the first half, and Ed, that uh, point after could mean a lot uh, in this ball game. Well, it could be uh, a matter of winning or, or losing uh, as the game goes on. Uh, you know, like a, a single point, or extra point, uh, those should be almost automatically, but I think he uh, stubbed his toe a little bit there on the ground, but it could be a very important point as the, the game goes on here. Did you ever used to kick up point after, Zed? Only when I was uh, in high school. I uh, used to kick field goals and punt and uh, extra points. But, I guess it's, uh, a, it's a little bit different, I guess, every uh, aspect of it, whether it's kicking field goals or punting, it's all different uh, coordination and what have you, I guess. Yes, it's uh, entirely different, and uh, only a uh, few guys are able to do it. And Fletcher takes this uh, kickoff and returns it to about the 35-meter line, Birds. where he's stopped by number 64, Birds. And we'll be talking to Mr. Fletcher on our player profile at the conclusion of this football game, seeing what's 
at all the happening at uh, Kelvin, and or rather at, yes, at Kelvin, and uh, what Mr. Fletcher's uh, into, and uh, some of his uh, hopes and dreams for the future. First down, 10 meters to go. Rob Steidel still at quarterback, and doing a fine job as he hands the ball straight up the middle. Didn't get the ball carrier's number there. Number 30 once again, Jeff Anderson carrying the ball. And Anderson has himself about a three meter gain. And it'll be second and seven. We have an injured ball player. I believe it's Nolan is shaken up on the play. Rob Steidel, grade 11 at Kelvin. Here's the standings in the Curry Division. Tech Vock, 2-0. Sisler, 2-1. Daniel Mack, 1-1. Kelvin, 1-1. And, and Gordon Bell, 0-1. And, and Grand Park, 0-3. So Grand Park, uh, last year, who uh, had a fine year and got right down to the finals, are uh, running into a little bit of problems. They've really been watching the uh, Eskimos this year. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, there's a shot of the games in the um, high school football yesterday. Churchill uh, defeated the Maples, St. Paul's defeated Elmwood, and Sisler defeated uh, Grand Park. Mike Nolan coming out of the ball game. Here's the cast division very quickly for you. Churchill 3-0, St. Paul's 2-0, Maples 1-2, Elmwood 1-2, and, and St. John's 0-2. But it's early yet in high school football, so when we get down to the end of the season, I'm sure those standings will be changed a little bit. Second down, eight meters to go. Passing situation, a fine catch by number 70, Bruce Darup, as he took the pass and has himself a very fine gain and a fine catch. He'll be very close to the first down, Ed. Yeah, uh, all it is is a straight uh, drop back by the quarterback, and he throws an excellent ball here because the only place he can throw it is high and let the receiver try to go up and get it because it might have been intercepted, uh, thrown in a lure. So it was a good gain, a uh, good play. So Bruce Dara making a fine catch, grade 11 student. It'll be third down, half a meter to go. High formation, I expect a quarterback sneak. A lot of movement on the line, and that it is, a quarterback sneak. As Steidel straight up the middle, and we'll have a flag on the play, which we do have, and uh, the penalty infraction is against the Daniel Mac Maroons, offside. So they'll talk to the offensive captain of the Calvin Clippers, give him his options. I imagine they would take the penalty here, Ed. Oh, yeah, uh, because he, he gained approximately about three yards, and uh, with the penalty, Give he'll five. pick up an extra two yards on the exchange. Outside is charged against the Browns. Calvin accepts the penalty and gets the first down. So it's first down for the Calvin Clippers as they're on the move. 13 to 7. Daniel Mac Maroons ahead of the Calvin Clippers. But Calvin are coming back. All the flankers are to the right. Steidel puts it out there. A fine catch by number uh, 38, uh, Chris Alady. And uh, I'll tell you, he just got that one away, Ed. Yeah, he, he just got it away. Uh, the, uh, the line has got to give him a little more time here. But uh, he did get the pass away. And just an excellent catch by the receiver there. Uh, you don't see any better than that in the pros. So it's second down, six meters to go. And we have three minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the first half. 13 to seven. Daniel Mack over the Kelvin Clippers. There's a draw. With Chris Alady carrying the ball. And a nice effort there, uh, Ed. It was a good effort, and it was a good call at the time because uh, Daniel Mack had a, a blitz on, and uh, they were coming up the middle, and it was just a, a great effort there that he, uh, he picked up some real good yards and happened to be the right play at the right time. So it's third down and about um, a half a meter to go as the Kelvin Clippers would <laughs> surely love to get back on even... Terms right now, at least ending the first half, that is. 
And quarterback Rob Steidel keeping the ball and will be very close to a first down. And you talk about momentum, Ed. I think that if, uh, if Calvin is able to go in there and, uh, and pick up uh, a uh, first down uh, at this particular play, as well maybe get a touchdown, uh, the momentum going to the dressing room could go uh, to the Calvin side. Yeah, I, I believe you're right there, Shelley. Uh, this is a very important drive. Uh, if they go in and score, like you say, the, the uh, momentum will pick up for Kelvin, but if Daniel Mack happens to stop them, then they're going to have the momentum at the halftime. So this is a very important drive for both teams. There's a shot of Pat Harris, the coach of the um, Daniel Mack Maroons and, um, or I'm sorry, the Kelvin Clippers and um, Daniel Mack stopped them there. They came up short dead, so that was a big defensive play uh, by the Daniel Mack Maroons. Yes, it was, and uh, I believe that the only reason that uh, they were stopped is uh, as the quarterback was running the quarterback sneak, he turned his back to the line and dropped too soon instead of sticking his head in, in a little gap there and driving with his legs to make sure that he got that first down. Here's Zoe on a fine gain for the Daniel Mac Maroons and uh, he knows how to put him up and lay him down at that back. Yes, that was a, a good hole there by the offensive line and uh, it's uh, off the, the right uh, tackle here and uh, cuts it back. And uh, notice here when he finds out that he has, uh, he can't uh, outmaneuver the defensive back, he just puts his head down again and drives for that extra yardage. And we have an injured ball player, Drew Walker of the Calvin Clippers. And he comes out of the ball game under his own steam. So no problems there as the replacement is sent in. And we have two minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first half as the Daniel Mac Maroons are on the move. EU trying to turn the corner and he does. Nice play there, Red. A lot of razzle-dazzle in the backfield. Had all the backs going in opposite positions and came back with Guillou on uh, end around. Yeah, uh, it was a uh, reverse uh, to the right side. And Guy came back, uh, taking the ball. And it was sure speed is the only thing that gave him a good gainer on there because he was dead uh, there in the backfield for a loss. But his speed uh, got him around the corner and he ended up making a nice gainer on it. Six yards. And or six meters rather, we have second and Zoe, uh, the ball carrier will be very close to a first down. As Zoe uh, tried the right side of the Calvin Clipper line and he will be very close to a first down. Uh, I think he's got it here, Shell. Great, uh, I guess that's what happens there. We need a lot of carriage. You got that great eyesight and you, oh, can, yeah. <laughs> you can see, but he will be, they're calling for a measurement. And I believe the Calvin Clippers have called the timeout as Pat Harris goes out there to talk to one of his players. See, I was wrong. That short, boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, I, at least I'm batting a thousand. I'm uh, 0 for 2. Hey, I, I was 0 for 6 one game, I'll tell you. It's the trouble with these guys sitting up here in the press box. They've got these binoculars, you see, and they can make bets, and they're walking out of here with all the bucks. So it's uh, third down, and uh, what do you figure? Just inches to go. Centimeters. centimeters to go. Correction. Thank you, gentlemen. Centimeters to go. <laughs> so it's third down, and just a little bit. Quarterback sneak. What do you think, Ed? Well, I think you're right this time. Wrong again. <laughs> As he hands off to Zoe right up the right side. And I'll tell you. I think we should uh, give up on predictions. Well, I don't think that Jimmy the Greek would have any uh, problem taking all our money yet. I think we've been wrong on every uh, prediction we've made up here today. But uh, Zoe taking the handoff from Fraser Merzak and moving the ball once again for the Daniel Mac Maroons. And we have a minute and 30 seconds remaining in the first half. And Daniel may be going to the air. Yes, he is. 
Wide open. Oh, wide open was number 76, uh, Neil Lenz, and uh, just overthrew him. And uh, you talk about a man being wide open, Ed. Oh, there was nobody within uh, five, six yards of him, and he <laughs> caught the ball. He could have walked into the end zone there. Well, there's a shot of uh, the tight end, Neil Lenz. Versatile, third-year player. Tight end and defensive end. Neil Lenz wears number 76 for the Daniel Mac Maroons. So it's second down, 10 meters to go, a minute and 21 seconds remaining in the first half, 13 to seven. Daniel Mac Maroons over the Calvin Clippers. And once again, he went to Neil Lenz, and that one he couldn't hang on, and I think he was really rocked there, Ed. Yes, he was, but uh, the fellow that unfortunately he couldn't pick up was number 16. He was wide open down the middle. There would have been an easy touchdown on that play, but uh, unfortunately the quarterback didn't pick him up. So it's third down, 10 meters to go, and the bird uh, comes into the ball game, and it looks like they're going to be going for the uh, one-point uh, attempt here, and I think they're going to just try to put that ball into the end zone and get back the point that they lost on the uh, missed uh, point after, after, the, after the touchdown. Yeah, I, I believe this is what they're trying to do. Uh, evidently, uh, the coach felt that uh, his field goal kicker was a little out of his range there, so he'll go for the sure one point. So the Daniel Mac Maroons pick up one point and go ahead 14 to 7. And we have a minute and eight seconds remaining in the first half, Ed. And uh, I'll tell you, both these clubs have played uh, fine football. I think that uh, the momentum uh, was in Kelvin's favor for a portion of the uh, second quarter, and then they lost it to the Maroons. Uh, yeah, you're right there, Kelly. And, and nobody has really taken over the game yet. It's it's kind of bouncing back and forth, and uh, nobody's really taken charge of it yet. So. Kelvin is uh, still just as much in the game as they were at uh, the start of the game. And uh, I think uh, it won't be until uh, the third or fourth quarter that somebody really uh, takes over the game. Or it might, it could go right down to the wire, back and forth. But right at this point, nobody has taken over the momentum in the game. Shot of uh, Coach Harris talking to his, uh, his quarterback, uh, Rob Steidel. And uh, the Calvin Clippers have called a, a timeout. Well, I guess uh, they're probably trying to decide here whether they uh, want to just try to run out the uh, clock or whether they uh, want to try to uh, go for a score. I want to thank all the people who um, supported the Shinerama on Friday. Great job. Uh, the schools really get behind that uh, project, and I want to thank all the people out there for their generous support with uh, Shinerama. So we have a minute and eight seconds remaining in the first half. A fine catch by Dangerfield. And uh, Dangerfield is still going. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, I thought it was a desperate throw there, Ed, but it was right on the money. And uh, Dangerfield uh, took that pass and went uh, quite away. Well, it was uh, an excellent call, good, good catch. And once uh, Dangerfield caught the ball, he showed us that he uh, he knows what to do with it. I thought he was going to go out of bounds there for a while, and then he makes a nice cut back here and picks up some extra yardage. Got a good block on the sideline, and uh, they're driving again. And 46 seconds remaining in the first half. <laughs> Anderson, the ball carrier. Anderson, the ball carrier, and he has himself about a six meter gain. But we have a flag on the play, and it looks like it's in the backfield of the Kelvin Clippers. So I assume it will be against um, the Calvin Clippers, and the indication is holding it. Yeah, obviously someone uh, was holding on the line, but it's just a quick pitch out here. He's got some good blocking out. Uh, the play is called back, but the uh, only thing that I would say that when he was running like that and he knows that there's not very much time on the clock, he should have kept running for the sideline and just took it out of bounds to stop the clock. So it's... Um, First down again, and 20 meters to go as the Calvin Clippers were charged with holding. Ideal play is a quick kick here, Ed. <laughs> I haven't seen one of those in quite Bill a while. Charlie Shepard days. Pitch out, quarterback hand off to the halfback, and he put it out there, and it was incomplete. But uh, once again, we have a flag on the play, Ed. 
as Dangerfield uh, took the pitch out uh, from the, the quarterback and uh, threw it out there. And um, unfortunately, it um, was not complete, but we have a flag on the play. And we'll have to wait for the infraction to be signaled up here to our broadcast booth. We have 31 seconds remaining in the first half. You're watching first and 10 on VPW Channel 13. Shelly Ostrov and Ed Ulmer. Legal procedure, Legal charge procedure against charged the against the Clippers. And the penalty was declined. So it'll be second down over again and lots of yards to go. Second down, not over again. Just second down as the penalty was declined. Pass intended for Jeff Anderson, and that was under thrown. And it'll be third down. And we have 21 seconds remaining in the first half. 13 to 7. Correction, 14 to 7. The Daniel Mac Maroons over the Calvin Clippers. VPW Channel 13 shows you football every Sunday morning, starting at 9 o'clock. 50th anniversary of high school football. I'd like to take the opportunity for thanking Don Marks for sitting in for us last week. Here's a attempted pass and it was almost picked off by number five, uh, Nilsson Sliva. Silva rather, and uh, as it was a fake kick and a pass attempt there, Ed. Yes, uh, nothing to lose, I guess. They have to go for, you know, for broke, so to speak. Well, they were, they were trying to pick up uh, a first down here and uh, maybe get uh, another score on the board uh, before halftime. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work, and uh, they've left uh, Daniel Mike with 17 seconds on the clock and uh, one uh, long completion there, and it could be within uh, field goal range. So Fraser Merzak has them out with 17 seconds remaining. Straight back to pass. A long attempt to pass. Wide open was number 16, Giyu. And I'll tell you, Ed, you talk about the man being wide open. If that ball would have been maybe a few meters shorter, it would have been six points. Yeah, yes, it, it would have. Uh, but again, uh, you, you notice here, uh, quarterback drops back. So he puts a nice loft on the ball, but as you can see on the on the monitor there, the receiver he's ran the last five or six yards with his hands up in the air again. Is it better for him to turn his head to the passer red rather than putting up his hands? Well, you turn, you look at the ball, but you keep your arms pumping because it's a known fact that uh, the faster you pump the arms, the the faster you can run. And when you put your arms up in the air, it slows you down. And as uh, in that case. The ball was just uh, maybe a foot off his fingertips, and with that little extra run with his hands down, he might have been able to catch that. Good point. Okay, second down and 10 meters to go. 11 seconds remaining in the first half. You're watching first and 10 on VPW, Channel 13, your public access television station here in Winnipeg. Same pass attempt, and the pass interference charged against uh, number 25, uh, that being Rob uh, Sherfield of the Calvin Clippers. And uh, why was there interference there? Uh, well, the uh, the uh, defender wasn't uh, really uh, concentrating that much on the ball, and the offensive uh, receiver tried to change directions to make a catch at the ball and uh, the defender wouldn't let him inside so he tried to uh, he was trying to change direction but that's a uh, sometimes can be a questionable call there because if the defender is uh, going after making a legitimate bid for the ball then in most cases they won't call that but in this case uh, I don't think the defender was uh, uh, paying attention to the ball he was paying more attention to the receiver and this is why the official threw the flag so here's the situation the daniel mac have first and ten the ball on the 
20 meter line. The score is 14 to seven, and we have five seconds remaining in the first half. What do you do, Ed? Kick for a single or go for broke? Well, if I had a, a field goal kicker that I thought could uh, kick it from here, I would take the points, because yeah, uh, the old guy, uh, Bud Grant, used to teach us you always take what you can get when you can get it. Well, he's going for broke. Puts it out there to Giyu. And he's got it for the touchdown, Ed. As Giyu uh, ran under that one and uh, must have heard you up here, Ed. He probably ran that one with his hands down and uh, got right behind the deep back and uh, picked up six. Well, if we have it on the, uh, on the replay, uh, you will notice that he ran longer with his hands down until he was underneath the ball. Uh, all the motion goes to the left, semi roll out by the quarterback. And you see here, is he put his hands up at the last moment. Now, if he'd have been running uh, the last uh, five or six yards with his hands up in the air, more than likely he wouldn't have got to that ball. But on that replay, it showed right there that he didn't put his hands up until the last moment to catch the ball. So here's the point after. No, it's a fake going for two in the end zone. Incomplete. So the score at the end of the first half, the Daniel Macburns 20, the Kelvin Clippers 7, and we'll be right back with the second half right after this. Every Wednesday evening at 7.30, Review presents interviews from the 1982 Winnipeg Folk Festival. On September 29th, it's Tony Bird. I, mean, I, do, I prefer music that relates uh, um, sincerely and intelligently to the culture from whence it comes and so on, but I also have a sense of humor about music. And also Heather Bishop. And as a performer, I think that uh, I have a real good opportunity to uh, talk about issues and help create change. That's review September 29th at 7.30 p.m. DPW Channel 13 your community access station in Winnipeg. Welcome back to the second half, and to open up the second half, the Kelvin Clippers will be kicking off to the Daniel Mac Maroons. The score, 20 to seven, in favor of the Daniel Mac Maroons over the Kelvin Clippers. And we'll be getting into the second half momentarily. There's the whistle, and there's the kickoff. Gilliu takes the ball and fumbles it, and the Calvin Clippers come up with the ball. Ed, you talk about momentum. Uh, Calvin may have it right now. Well, if they can uh, go down and uh, score a fumble on this possession, I think they'll put him right back in the game and give him quite a quite a good lift here. Um, it was a good run back. Uh, he's coming up the middle there. But someone just reaches out, grabs the ball out. Number 67 is right there and uh, recovers it for Kelvin. And now they got to take advantage of this. Straight back to pass. Complete. A fine catch by number 71, Fletcher. You know, the way he took that uh, pass reminded me of um, an old play, uh, a player of yours, Ed, um, Farrell Funston. Uh, this is actually the way he used to catch the ball. You know, Fungi was a great receiver back in his day there. But it's just a simple uh, drop back and uh, break out. He makes a nice little move here, picks up some extra yardage and out of bounds. So it's first and 10 for the Calvin Clippers as Rob Steidel has a moving. Fumble. Loose ball. Fumble. Oh, and the Maroons get it back, Ed. So, uh, big play for the Danny Mac Maroons and unfortunately for the Calvin Clippers. You know, it's very unfortunate because they had recovered, had recovered a fumble and they had a uh, little momentum going here, but uh, the exchange between the quarterback, I think the the uh, back going through the hole didn't have his arms up so the quarterback could ball put, put the ball in there and they never uh, really got full control of it. So the Daniel Mac Bruins have an opportunity now. The ball on the 25 meter line. 
Nice bit of faking by the quarterback, Merzak, and so the ball carrier comes straight up the middle, and he has himself about 11 meter gain. Just checking on who the ball carrier was. Third wheel, uh, the there's a down there, uh, Unable to pick up the 25. ball carrier there. Uh. But nevertheless, the Daniel Mac Maroons are on the move. So it'll be first and 10 meters to go. Well, if Kelvin wants to stay in this game, they got to stop the Maroons on this, this drive. Well, but being behind 20 to 7, Ed, uh, you got to make some big plays and uh, to get back into this ball game very quickly as we're here in the third Mike. quarter. Zo the ball carrier. And he has himself about an 8-meter gain. So it'll be second and two. Well, actually, uh, they don't have to, to make it all at once. Uh, all they need is two, uh, two converted touchdowns, and they, they're in the lead here. But the main thing is they can't give up another touchdown now. They've got to stop them on this drive and get the ball back to their offense. Oh, it's second down, two meters to go. Fraser Merzak has gone the distance so far. Just a little Kata quick. the ball carrier straight up the left side for the first down. Yep, just a quick uh, handoff yeah, there off the left tackle there for a nice little game. The so the ball is now on the 47 meter line. First and 10 for the Daniel Mac Maroons. And Daniel is on the march. So the ball carrier goes outside. Finally stopped by number 40, Hartley Clarick. Hartley Sharuk, rather. Sharuk make the Stop for the Calvin Clippers. That'll be second down, six meters to go. That's Hartley Sharuk. Grade 11 students for the Calvin Clippers was there to make the tackle. Fraser Merzak back to pass, puts it out there. It's complete to Kattegay. And Kattegay gets down to about the 25 meter line. But we have a flag on the play. What do we have? What we have here is an uh, action play, play pass here with a uh, back coming out into the flat. Quarterback uh, drops back, throws a nice little soft pass out there. Nice touch, and uh, number 24 makes a nice run there. But I think there was uh, someone that had a little uh, clip there just before the ball was caught. So that one will come back as the Daniel Mac Maroons are penalized. Penalized for interference. The second down, 15 meters to go. And the uh, Kelvin Clippers, the defense they're playing, is just a, what, a straight uh, four-man line? They're playing a, a four-man line uh, with uh, two outside backers. Merzak puts it out there, a fine catch by number 27. Try to pick up his name for you. Di Vicenzo. Number 27, Di Vicenzo making the catch. Yeah. What, what they're playing uh, mainly is uh, what, they call, what you call a 4-3 zone. Okay, and the, uh, they've played very, very little man-to-man. -man. They basically, uh, in the high school level, the only time that you really go to the man-to-man -to -man is when you're close down on the uh, goal line or when you're in a short yardage situation so you can get the quick support from the backs. So Daniel will be punting. And Bird kicks this one. Took a Daniel McIntyre bounce, and the Kelvin Clippers taking the uh, 
punt as Haledi returning this punt for the Calvin Clippers. I guess, Ed, that uh, after a punt is um, is kicked, I guess you got to get down there very, very quickly to, to cover all lanes or uh, and your responsibilities, of course, or uh, to get down there because they can break one any time if you're not, uh, if you get down lackadaisive anyways. Well, yes, uh, everyone has a designated lane that they have to uh, uh, follow down the field, but the main thing is if you have a short punt there, the punter can also go down and recover the ball and run it for a touchdown or whatever. So if you, you're you the first one as a punter to know whether the ball is uh, short or long or right or whatever, which you should be hollering to your lineman going down and and to run down and, uh, you know, try to recover your own uh, punt. You know, I can remember uh, a few times doing it uh, while playing with the Bombers there, and uh, you get quite a thrill out of it. Well, the first play was Anderson carrying the ball, and he lost four meters, so it's second down and 14 meters to go. Uh, Sliva came up with a fine play for the Daniel Mac Maroons. There's a pass that was intended for the wide receiver. It was incomplete. So it'll be third down for the Calvin Clippers, and they're going to be forced to kick this one uh, pretty close to their goal line, Ed. Yeah, they're they're down there deep, so uh, uh, Daniel Mack should come out with real good field position on this, and uh, it's going to put the pressure on Kelvin's uh, defense again. And like I say, they if they uh, come up with another score, then uh, Kelvin's really going to be in trouble. Well, we'll have to see this punt that the Calvin Clippers uh, will attempt. Not a bad punt at all. As soon as I get my speech <laughs> correct here, Ed. <laughs> but uh, there was an interesting play, Ed, and uh, like to show that one again, if we can run that one again, gentlemen. Uh, we just picked up and slammed to the turf, and uh, no yards, of course, will be charged against the uh, the Calvin Clippers, but uh, just what we were talking about, Ed, uh, 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 the punter uh, was uh, free to come down and do whatever he wanted. Yes, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't the punter that recovered the ball there. Um, the uh, other uh, 11 fellows on the field still have to give uh, the Sufficient necessary yardage. five uh, yards or meters, but... Uh, Young fellow, he kind of lost his head there and picked up the ball, and I think he paid for it afterwards. <laughs> they too. really decked him, I'll tell you. So it's first down for the Daniel Mac Maroons, who lead in the ball game 20 to 7. So the ball carrier once again, and we have flags are flying again, Ed. Yes, this was thrown in the defensive backfield, so. Uh, it uh, more than likely is going to be called on the defense there. Well, Nolan uh, made the tackle for the Calvin Clippers. And the indication here is that it's a first down, a legal substitution charged against the Calvin Clippers. So it will be first and 10 for the Daniel Mac Maroons. They're getting closer and closer to that goal line there. And, uh, so the ball is on the 12-meter Line first and ten. Kattegay, the ball carry once again, and flags once again are flying in. It looks like we got a battleship out there with all those flags right now. Right, uh, that was a straight uh, handoff off tackle there, and uh, uh, number twenty-four just uh, picked his holes in there quite nicely. But, uh, face masking charged against uh, the Clippers, uh, and it'll be half the distance to the goal line. So it'll be first and ten for the Daniel Mac Maroons. As the ball is marked on about the two-meter line. You uh, you hate to see this happening to a team because this this drive uh, basically has uh, been. Uh, kept alive mainly on penalties and uh, you can't afford to do that especially when you're behind in a game. So an old in for the touchdown for the Daniel Mac Maroons so they'll go ahead 26 to 7 over the Calvin Clippers and uh, Ed rightfully uh, as you said uh, I think that uh, the uh, Calvin Clippers have, um, are a little overmatched in this particular game right now. Yes, uh, here's a, a touchdown here. It's just a straight uh, dive handoff, and the offensive line, uh, uh, all they are trying to do is just get low and blow the defense back 
one yard so that you can get into the end zone there, and they were very successful at that. So Brian Minolt into the end zone for the touchdown for the Daniel Mac Maroons. This is a Brian's second year playing as well as starting. And they list him as a linebacker, and uh, he also fills in in the offensive backfield. So the score now is 26 to 7. The Daniel Mac Maroons really taking it to the Calvin Clippers right now. And uh, I'll tell you, if Calvin want to come back in this game, Ed, they've got to return this one uh, very, very quickly and get a good field position and probably score on every possession. Well, it's uh, they're getting too close to the desperate stage now. And you can also see the morale of uh, the Calvin Clippers uh, starting to fade a little. Even the bench has gotten First quiet now. So they need something to excite them. A lady taking that uh, kickoff for the Calvin Clippers. So it'll be first and 10. The ball is being marked on about the 40 meter line. As Rob Steidel brings in the offensive alignment for the Calvin Clippers. And again, we have a penalty. Clipping or blocking below the waist, Ed. I believe that was the uh, infraction. Well, it seems like on uh, every play now or every series of downs, uh, Calvin uh, seems to be losing their composure and uh, we're having a penalty on every, almost every play now. So Calvin has to get something going if they want to get back into this ball game. Not going to do it that way as the Daniel Mac Maroons really stormed in there to make the tackle. Anderson was snuffed really right at the line of scrimmage as Tim Klein, the defensive tackle, made the play. Where's number 67 of the Daniel Mac Maroons? Very quick to come in there and make the tackle. That'll be second down, 13 meters to go. As Kelvin have to put it up in the air. Almost picked off by number 25 as Scott Noble, uh, the linebacker, was Johnny on the spot there. Red could have been six as uh, Noble just couldn't find the handle. Well, on, on this particular play, the quarterback was dropping back and he didn't have very much time. There was a lot of pressure on him. Consequently, he threw the ball slightly behind the receiver and almost directly into the hands of uh, one of the maroon players. They're going to have to give, if they want to get back in the game, they're going to have to give the quarterback more time because he's going to have to pass to get to get something going. And right now he's not getting enough time. And there's the punch. Handled by Giu. Giu looking for running room, little straight arm. And he's finally brought down by number 38, Chris Halady of the Calvin Clippers. Maybe the shotgun here would help uh, Kelvin, uh, Ed, uh, give the quarterback a little bit more time. Well, it depends on whether they've, uh, they've worked on it in practice uh, and whether you have a center that is capable of getting the ball back at a, at a good snap there. But uh, the main thing is uh, they're just going to have to start uh, trying a little harder, pulling together, and uh, see how bad they want to win this game. So it's first and ten. Daniel Mac Maroons and uh, timeout has been called by the Calvin Clippers and I think that was a, a wise move Ed, as they had players uh, running in and out and uh, it was good uh, sharp thinking by the fellow who called the timeout uh, so that a penalty was not called. Yes because uh, on the uh, previous series when uh, uh, the Maroons had the ball and uh, they had a pen penalty of the same uh, thing and uh, it seems Again, that there's uh, confusion and uh, the morale is is fading there. It's a shot of Merzak talking to Coach Kaniski, going over some of the plays that uh, will be called in this sequence. As Fraser Merzak, the three-year veteran, and he's in his second year as starting quarterback of the Daniel Mac Maroons, and a fine quarterback. Has all the attributes, good attitude, and a leader out there for the Daniel Mac Maroons. Fraser Merzak. Didn't get that number, Ed, as uh, 
The back went very quickly through the hole. I believe that was number 34. We'll pick his number up for you. Yeah, I believe that you're right. Uh, it was just a quick, uh, what you call a quick hitter, right off uh, left guard, left tackle there. And uh, the, the line opened up a nice hole for him, and he picked up uh, about six yards. Chris Gattaway was the ball carrier there. It's just a quick dive. The quarterback, uh, no faking whatsoever. He just takes the ball from the center, hands off, and that back hits that hold as fast as he can. And usually on a play like this, they, uh, they tell the lineman to uh, just block straight ahead and uh, take the defender whichever way he wants to go and let the back pick the hole. And the injured ball player is coming off the field. It was Larry Ayu is the running back who uh, carried the ball for the Daniel Mac Maroons. Prima, the injured ball player, coming out under his own steam. So Larry Ayu wears number 34 for the Daniel Mac Maroons and he Fine ball carrier, fumble in the backfield as Fraser Merzak picks the ball up and uh, you talk about the uh, Daniel Mack bounce, that one bounced right back into his hands Ed, and uh, very fortunate for the, the Maroons or the Calvin Clippers could have had a big fumble there, recovery there. Well, it's, it seems that uh, when uh, th things are going your way here, it's just a mishandle. Uh, the quarterback was actually pulling out from underneath the center too fast there before he had the ball. And... Uh, you know, when things are bouncing your way, they're bouncing your way, and uh, the ball just popped right back up in his hand, and he ended up picking up a couple of yards off of it. And Daniel will be playing at St. Paul's on Monday. So that's tomorrow. You want to get out there and watch some high school football. Daniel at St. Paul's. That's tomorrow night. Shotgun formation, and they're running out of it, Ed, as Giu trying to turn the corner, and he does turn it inside. Fine play there, if we can have that again, uh, Mr. Prentice. Uh, like to show that one to our viewers. Well, they line up uh, in punt formation there, and they have uh, four backs deep there blocking for the punt, and all uh, the center does is uh, he just, just direct snap back to him, and he's got four guys out blocking. The uh, offensive end tries to hook the defensive end, and uh, again, though, the play was only successful because of his speed. He I outran the, uh, the uh, defenders around the uh, right end. And Kelvin, by the way, will be playing um, Sisler next Thursday. There's a shot at Greg Gee on the sideline. It's a little um, injury. Nothing serious, which is good to see. So the ball carrier straight up the left side. And down to make the stop. Boy, I'll tell you, Ed, this Daniel Mac Maroons, they're just a real powerhouse out there right now. They're just moving that ball um, at random, and uh, Kelvin know what they're going to do, but uh, they can't seem to uh, stop it. I think that uh, Daniel is saying, hey, we're going right up the middle. Try to stop us, and that's what they're doing. Well, the success right now is uh, the offensive line. They're just blowing uh, Kelvin's defensive line off. They don't even have to pass the ball anymore. It's just every play is a run, and uh, like you say, they say, hey, we're going to run the ball, you stop us, but they can't because the offensive line is doing such a great job of opening up holes there. The backs, uh, they're hitting the line at uh, full speed there. They're not having to even slow down or pick their holes. Uh, they're, so they're, just, they're just running full bore, and so uh, you got to give a credit to that offensive line of Daniel Mack. So the ball is on the five meter line as Zoe picks up another first down. First and five, first and touchdown to go, rather. So once again, the ball carrier, and he will be very close. And we have an injured ball player. Again, though, that the was... Mike, the uh, injured player there is Mike Nolan of the um, the Calvin Clippers, Ed, and uh, he's uh, flat on his back, and he'll be up uh, momentarily. Here's a replay of that one, Ed. Okay, again, it's just uh, a straight uh, reverse handoff to uh, the fullback coming up the middle there, and uh, again, uh, they're just blowing him back like uh, he picked up, what, four yards on that play there? So they're uh, now second and... Uh, 
on the one and a half yard line and uh, I just don't see uh, Kelvin holding him out of the end zone. There's a shot of um, Ed Ulmer. I want to thank Ed for taking time from his uh, busy job to come down and help us here at the uh, velodrome and uh, once again, uh, thank you again, Ed, and appreciate uh, your comments. My pleasure. And Mike Nolan comes out of the ball game. Nothing serious, and he should be back in very shortly. Second down, touchdown to go. Fraser Merzak has the boys out. All the backs coming in. There's Zoe into the end zone for the touchdown. So that ends the third quarter. We'll have to go for the point after before, but the score will now uh, should be 32 to 7. And we'll go for the point after. 32 to 7. The Daniel Mac Maroons over the Calvin Clippers. What turned out to be a very exciting uh, ball game, Ed, uh, turned out to be a uh, a roast uh, by the uh, Daniel Mac Maroons, who uh, I guess just uh, did about everything right today. Well, it was a it was a good game until the, the last minute of the first half, and uh, on that third down gamble, when they didn't make it up, on, uh, make it on the quarterback sneak, and uh, Daniel got the ball and went down and scored, and that was the. Uh, that was the turning point. Here's the replay of the touchdown, Ed. Okay, again, it's just a straight, uh, straight handoff, uh, reverse handoff to uh, number 26 going off uh, left tackle, and the oh, offensive oh, line oh, just oh, blew him right back, uh, blew Kelvin right back into the end zone. Uh, so the score, Ed, after the third quarter is 33 to seven. The Daniel Mac Maroons over the Calvin Clippers. And uh, you know, Ed. Um, this um, Daniel Mack club has really impressed me today. I think they uh, really came to play uh, defensively and offensively, and uh, I think uh, Murzak has called an exceptionally strong game, uh, mixing his plays and uh, using Zoe uh, very, very effectively. Yes, he has. Uh, their running game has been excellent uh, today, and uh, the times that they've had to the pass, uh, they've been very successful at that and uh, it's just been a well-balanced game and they've got it well in control now. So Fletcher taking the kickoff, returning that one for the Calvin Clippers. We'll be doing our player profile with Mr. Fletcher and Roger will be telling us what he's got in mind for himself and just a general interview with Roger Fletcher at the conclusion of this football game. Battle back to pass, puts it up. Was almost intercepted. And the pass was intended for uh, Roger Fletcher and uh, couldn't hang on to that one. But I'll tell you, Ed, if he didn't go after the ball, it could have been very easily intercepted by uh, Tim Frampton of the um, of the Maroons. Well, actually, on that particular play there, the roles reverse because uh, Fletcher became uh, more of the defender than uh, the receiver because uh, the defender was uh, in great position to intercept the ball and hadn't been for a good effort on his part, there would have been an interception. So it's second down, 10 meters to go. Quarterback option or a halfback option rather as Anderson uh, just threw that up one for grabs, Ed, and uh, the Daniel Macaroons, I believe, uh, have the ball. I don't know whether they're going to call this a fumble or a um, or a pass interception. Uh, we'll have to find that out, Ed. But a uh, little careless out there by the back. You think he'd hang on to the ball? Well, I think uh, there was definitely a mistake made there, but they might have. Uh, no, I guess I thought at one point that uh, they might. Uh, there's the replay, Ed. Call the play dead because he was in the grass, but... Uh, just threw it up for grabs. He just threw it up. Uh, he should have just taken a loss, and they could have punted the ball and uh, got themselves out of a, a jam here. But, uh, again, it's these mistakes, uh, the holding, the clipping, uh, a mistake like that, and now there's more pressure on the defense again. They're... Uh, Daniel Mack is in a great uh, scoring position again. Um, it's the mistakes that... Is starting to really hurt them now. James James Brown, the injured ball player, comes out of the out of the game. 
little little temperature is getting a little colder here, Ed. I think we're going to have to get the old heaters going there uh, pretty soon. Uh, yeah, with high school football in the fall, it's, uh, it does get uh, rather chilly. And uh, I guess you come to these games, bundle up warm, and uh, have a lot of fun. So it's first down for the Daniel Mac Maroons. New quarterback, Joe Lopez. Are you the ball carrier up the left side? <laughs> well, it's good to see uh, a new quarterback get in uh, because uh, Daniel Mack uh, now have the game well in hand. So, you know, it's uh, it's nice to get your other players in there and let them get the experience and the playing time. Well, Lopes is a rookie backup quarterback, a grade 10 student, and I'll give him the opportunity to play, which is always good to see. A little fumble in the backfield. Lopes picks it up, looking for running room, goes to the outside. Smart play, Ed. Uh, he knew what to do with the ball. Very smart. Quick thinking. He uh, picked the ball up and didn't hesitate. He knew where uh, the blocking was, so he took off to the right side there, and he, he got an excellent block from one of his receivers down there. It was just a, a miss handoff there and you, you're going to have that when you get a get a new uh, quarterback into the game there but he uh, turned it into an excellent play and he picked up a first down ed so the uh, daniel mac maroons uh, substitute quarterback the backup quarterback rather joe loops uh, making a fine play and picking up a first down for the daniel mac maroons who lead in the ball game 33 to 7 and we're in the fourth quarter we have nine minutes and 22 seconds remaining Back to pass, puts it out there, picked off, interception. By the Calvin Clippers. It was a nice uh, hitty uh, uh, play by the defensive back there. Uh, we really can't uh, blame the quarterback. He rolls out to his left, makes a, a nice little juke there to get away from uh, on rushing tackle, and he hits the receiver right in the hands, but uh, he couldn't hold on to the ball, and it ended up in uh, an interception. Rob Jezrusevsky making the interception. I almost had enough problems with that name. Everybody is <laughs> laughing it up here, but that's easy for you to say, gentlemen, as it was intercepted by the Calvin Clippers. First and 10. <laughs> picked up for grabs as it's picked off. Well, we do have a flag down on the play. Don't we? we have a flag on the play. The pass was intended for Fletcher. Trying to pick up the number who intercepted that one. Oh, Nia Wall. <laughs> picked up that one defensive back gray 10 rookie as he picked off the interception and we'll show that one again Ed mm -hmm. quarterback straight drop back he's got fairly good protection but he kind of lobs it up there and uh, as you can see there's about six uh, maroon jerseys around here and only one red one and uh, the result uh, we all saw him. so that'll be first and ten for the Daniel Mac Maroons Ah, the ball carrier. This is a good uh, defensive play here. It's, uh, turn, uh, quarterback turns, quick pitch. Uh, the uh, defender came up, uh, one of the defenders came up and forced a play back inside, and then he had good pursuit there, and they held it to a two yard gain. So that'll be second and eight. <laughs> Excuse me. Second down, eight yards to go. Well, uh, there was just a reverse handoff there. Uh, the timing was off a little bit on uh, that last play, but an excellent hit by uh, number 40, 48 there for Kelvin. Uh, didn't make the, uh, the stop, but he slowed him down enough that the other uh, defender players could uh, come in and make a stop on him. So the ball is marked on the 24 meter line. Kicking situation for the Daniel Macaroons. 
as Bird will probably put this into the end zone. And he does. As Fletcher gives up a single point. So the score is now 34 to seven. And uh, I guess this is the time, Ed, when uh, the coaches uh, will probably be making a lot of substitutions on both sides, uh, giving their rookies an opportunity to play. Uh, yes, uh, the game's uh, a little out of hand now. And uh, it's a good opportunity for you to get uh, some of your younger players in and uh, your non-starters. Uh, but Kellen, uh, they also have got to have pride too. And uh, I'm sure that they would like to go down and maybe put uh, one more score on the board before this game is over. So the ball goes to the 30 yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Kelvin Clippers. Anderson, the ball carry around the right side. Stopped up very quickly by Tim Frampton of the Daniel Mac Maroons. And the loss was about four meters. Make it second and 14 meters to go. Well, I tell you, anytime that they uh, run that sweeper quick pitch to that right side, that Frampton, he is always in there. He's made two or three excellent plays on there. So second and 14. Staddle, all the way at quarterback, puts it out there, and it's complete to Roger Fletcher. As Frampton once again, back from a... And Roger, of course, will... Um, Roger Fletcher will be on our pregame show with our uh, with our profile. And here's a replay of him making that play. It's a straight drop back uh, quarterback. He uh, he runs an in pattern across the middle there. Quarterback throws a nice ball. Unfortunately, uh, wasn't long uh, long enough for the uh, first down. Third down and lots of yards to go. There's the punt. All the players running back to try to get uh, out of the uh, insufficient yardage zone, but unable to do so. As Jason Sanderson was in there to make the tackle. Correction, Mark Edstrom, grade 11 student, was there to make the tackle for the Calvin Clippers, charged with uh, insufficient yardage. So the ball will be moved. A 10 yard penalty as insufficient yardage was given the punt returner of the Daniel Mac Maroons. The ball on the 46 meter line. First and 10, Daniel Mack. Leading in the ball game, 34 to seven. Ball carrier picking up very little yardage on that particular play, but needless to say, the Calvin Clippers were offside, so they'll have to do that again, explaining the option to the Daniel Mac Maroon players. I guess uh, in this particular game anyways, Kelvin uh, just didn't have it going for them this game, Ed, but uh, they, they did play a fine game in, in, up to the first half, and uh, then things, I guess, uh, fell apart for them, but uh, it's early in the season. I'm sure they'll bounce back. Oh, yeah. Uh, season isn't made on uh, one game, and uh, I'm sure that these uh, young fellows have a lot of pride, and uh, I wouldn't want to be a team that's going to be playing them next. Long attempt to pass, and it just off the fingertips of uh, Os Oswaldo Mello. Mello Oswald. Sure you got that right? Uh, yeah, number 21, I believe his name is Oswaldo Mello. Rookie, grade 12 for the Daniel Mac Maroons, and uh, nice attempt to uh, catch that ball. <laughs> I missed here uh, as um, Oswaldo was a rookie and he's in grade 10 at uh, Daniel Mack. And he's playing a wide receiver position for the Daniel Mack Maroons. Ah, 
the ball carrier could go all the way. No, he's pushed into touch on about the 10, uh, 15 uh, meter line, but uh, we have a flag on the play, so that one will probably come back. Clipping charged against the Daniel Mac Maroon, so that uh, fine gain will be nullified as the ball will come back. Okay, he's got good uh, blocking out in front, turns the corner here, sheds a tackle, and he's going down the sideline. At one point, it looks like he's going to go all the way, but uh, the defensive back comes over, knocks him out of bounds, and unfortunately, there uh, was a clip on the play. And uh, St. Paul's coach uh, Len Sitter is here scouting the uh, Daniel Mack team for Monday. A uh, little bit of scouting on behalf of the St. Paul's coach up here in the press box. Wanted to see what uh, Daniel Mack uh, can do, and I'll tell you, he uh, must be impressed because uh, they do everything uh, quite well today and uh, are showing it uh, and leading in the ballgame 34 to 7 with 3.52 uh, uh, remaining in the ballgame. Joe Lopes at quarterback, taking over from Fraser Merzak. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Barry Barkman in to make the tackle. Second down, 10 meters to go. Thirty-four to seven. Three minutes and twenty seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The next game will feature the Tech Vaux Club against Gordon Bell, and that should be a very exciting game. So don't go away and watch that one. A pass attempt is intercepted by number twenty-seven, Brent Linz. Grade twelve students of the Calvin Clippers intercepted that one. So Calvin once again. Not giving up, and that's good to see, Ed. They came to play, and uh, they are playing uh, right out. Oh, definitely. Uh, and like I said, these young uh, men, they have a lot of pride here. You see the uh, quarterback will roll out. He's got very quick feet there. But he throws, just kind of lays the ball up there. And when you're throwing out in the flat, you got to really zip it out there. And he was rolling to his left, and he kind of laid it out there, and, and it was intercepted by number 27. The fine interception by Linz, who was Johnny on a spot to uh, pull in that interception. There's an attempt by a new quarterback of the Kelvin Clippers, uh, Kelvin Chipper. Mr. Clifford of the Kelvin Clippers, now in at quarterback. Grade 11 students putting that one up for intended receiver, and it was overthrown. So Clifford will have to come out of something, out of his hat this time, to try to get back those 10 meters very quickly. Straight back to pass. Clifford puts it out there, and it's interference, inter interference as well as being uh, incomplete, as it was intended for number 75. Uh, folks, <coughs> pass interference there, Ed. Yeah, it's a definitely uh, pass interference. The uh, defensive back uh, made contact with the receiver before the ball had uh, reached his hands. This will be our last coverage for Calvin this year, but we will be seeing Daniel. One more time. Unless, of course, we can see Kelvin in the playoffs. Harwood on a fine play there on a draw. It's just a de delayed draw. And uh, quarterback takes the ball, runs back to the back, hands in the ball, and the on rushing uh, defenders are gone by, and he makes a nice cut to the outside and picks up a good gainer. He also gets out of bounds to stop the clock. So it's first and 10 for the Calvin Clippers. As they sure like to get one back here in the late stages of the fourth quarter. Back to pass. Complete. To Pauls, who makes a fine catch. Stopped by Ingram. Okay, what we have is a straight drop back pass. 
quarterback gets good protection. The uh, end runs a uh, down and out pattern and he hits him right on the button for a nice game. Chin also went on the tackle there for the Daniel Mac Maroons. Second down, half a meter to go. <laughs> Draw once again to Harwood. It's the same play that they ran uh, two plays before that. Uh, where quarterback simply. Uh, Todd Harwood made a nice play there, uh, Ed. Yeah, you know, the quarterback uh, just dropped back, handed him a ball, and uh, he broke it off, uh, off tackle there. And uh, he shows good speed there, and uh, he's got some good moves there because he uh, turns it into uh, a bigger gainer than uh, it looked like the play was going to go for at first. Number 11 is listed as Harwood Jones. We apologize. We've been just calling him Harwood, but it's Harwood Jones. Problems there. And Jeff Anderson uh, taking the uh, beating there, and that's a substantial loss for the uh, Calvin Clippers there, Ed. Yes, uh, here we have uh, quarterback just turns. It's a quick pitch. They mishandle the ball. Uh, the quarterback threw it a little bit high, but uh, the back, uh, w what he should have done is w once he uh, got the ball is just turn it up and get whatever he can out of it instead of going backwards. So you're watching first and 10 high school football on VPW. Shelly Osser along with Ed Almer and the VPW crew here at the Velodrome. Each Sunday we'll bring you a pair of games. Interference there, Ed. Yep. Uh, the uh, Folks uh, was interfered there. Again, the, uh, the uh, offensive receiver, he had good position here. Uh, the ball wasn't uh, badly thrown, but the defender comes through the receiver before the ball gets there, and that's a no-no. So it's first down for the Calvin Clippers, who are trailing 34 to seven, and uh, would sure love to get into the end zone then this game, Ed. Well, I think they're gonna they're gonna make it. They got a minute and two seconds to go, and uh, the interference play kept their drive alive. Quarterback puts it out there and overthrows the uh, intended receiver. Was your rope. And we have mon one minute remaining in the football game, Ed. Well, it sure would be nice to see them, uh, you know, cross that goal line one more time. It would mean a lot to them uh, going into their next game. Second down, 10 meters to go. Clifford at quarterback. Placing Rob Steidel. Clifford puts it out there. Interference. Charge against number 20. And there's a flag on the play. And as we said, interference was charged against uh, the um, Daniel Mac Maroon player number 20, Frank uh, Sousa. Uh, the great 10 rookie, and uh, it'll be first and 10. You know, quarterback drops back on a semi roll. Uh, the ball was a little, a little high, but uh, the defender took his feet out uh, while he was trying to go for the ball, so the official threw the flag. So the ball is on the two-meter line, and the Calvin Clippers are knocking on the door. 51 seconds remaining in the ball game. 77 Anderson, the ball carrier, unable to get into the end zone. It'll be second and about a half a meter to go. Any predictions? Yeah, I thought he was going to go to the big back. They had. Uh, Mike uh, Dangerfield in the backfield uh, wearing number 77. I thought they would give him the ball, Ed. Uh, pretty big boy. Grade 12 student uh, of the Calvin Clippers. And uh, I figured there'd be a little quarterback sneak here, Ed. I think this quarterback, being a rookie, would probably like to get into the end zone. Nope, puts it up in the air. Could be intercepted. And no, it's incomplete, I'll tell you. That takes a lot of guts to put it up when you're that close. I thought it'd be maybe a little rollout action there, Ed. Well, 
Well, I thought uh, myself, I thought maybe they would uh, just use a quick handoff, let the uh, the back get a running good running start and uh, let him try to punch it in there in one of the gaps. That's it. Very close to being picked off for an interception, but it's third down, touchdown to go. I think it's going to ro roll out here to the right end and sneak it into the end zone. Okay, Got to be right well. once in a while. Wrong again, but he went to the right side. He went into the end zone for the touchdown. Chris Lady into the end zone for a touchdown. So the score is now 13 to 34. And uh, I don't think uh, Kelvin uh, can win this game, Ed, but uh, they gave it a good shot. I thought that uh, they stayed in the game uh, right to the end. They didn't give up. And it uh, says a lot for the coaching staff and the players of Kelvin. Well, I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, that was one of the things that the coach really wanted to see after this game got out of hand as to whether his boys would keep fighting and keep trying or wh whether they would just uh, lay down and give up and uh, you got to give uh, Kelvin credit Two because point they conversion. didn't. They kept fighting all the way and they're still fighting. Hey, and Anderson goes in there for the two point conversion Ed, uh, and uh, that uh, that uh, shows a lot of guts. That team is uh, is not uh, dead and uh, the score is 34 to 15 for the uh, Daniel Mac Maroons over the Calvin Clippers. We have 20 seconds to go. I'm looking for a short kickoff here, Ed. I, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be surprised at all. Here's the uh, replay on the touchdown. This is the type of play that I thought they would run before. Uh, it's just a quick handoff. Let the offensive line blow out and give that back a head of steam and let him try to hit one of those gaps and uh, take it in there for six. And there you see the score. The Daniel Macaroon's 34. The Calvin Clippers 15. Don't go away as Calvin are going to probably attempt a onside kick here. The next game will feature the Tech Bach Hornets against the Gordon Bell Panthers, and the Tech Bach team has just arrived, and uh, I'll tell you, talk about a number of players, Ed. Looks like they got 40-some uh, players there. It, uh, well, looks they, like a pretty big club there. They have a few down there. And here comes the attempted short kickoff, uh, we assume. But then again, Ed, we haven't been right too many times in the first game, and uh, we'll have to see what happens here. Well, now would be a good time to uh, to try it because uh, nothing to lose, you, and you know you can't win the game. So uh, this would be a good time to work on it. Well, didn't go. Went for a short one, straight up the gut, Dad, and uh, it's taken by um, number 15, uh, Joseph Gallant. Uh, he's a rookie. Uh, as number 15, Joseph Gallant is returning that one. So it'll be first and ten for the Daniel Mac Maroons. Twelve seconds remaining in the football game. Stay tuned for our player profile with Roger Fletcher of the Calvin Clippers. Number 15, the ball carrier, Joseph Gallant. And there goes the gun to end the football game. The score, Daniel Macaroon's 34, and the Calvin Clippers 15, and we'll be right back with our player profile right after this. you could join us. You are participating in Community Access Television, VPW Channel 13. Welcome to Pro Profile, Player Profile. We have Roger Fletcher with us. Roger, uh, an interesting football game out there, but rather than talking about the football game in general, Roger, what, what's basically happening with yourself at school and uh, how's it going out there? Well, it's going along pretty good for me, I guess. It's just going along pretty good. You're in what grade, Roger? 12. Grade 12. What's next year? What about next year for you? What are you looking at doing? Uh, I'd like to play some more football. Yeah, how about how about school? What do you want to do? Go to university? Try to, yeah. Hopefully I can go to university. What would you like to take? 
Um, athletic things like gym teacher or something. You want to become an athletic yeah. teacher, or, you know, yeah. at, at school. Yeah. What's the school spirit like out there, Roger? Is it oh, pretty good out there now? It's great. Yeah. It's things great. are things are really happening. Yeah, the fans are really behind us. So. What else do you do besides play football, Roger? What other are you into any other activities at uh, at Calvin? I play basketball, some track. And that's almost it. A little bit of track? Yeah. How about basketball? Any basketball out there? Yeah, I'm in basketball, yeah. What basically do sports offer you out there, Roger? I mean, what are some of the things that, that you do over and beyond just playing football? Or uh, does it, by being on the football club, does it give you any any doors open for you for other things as well? Or Yeah, like it's, like I really like football and I like playing it. And uh, it really gets me in shape for the other things that happen. And you, and you, want, to, and you want to go to university and, and yeah. hopefully become an athletic uh, yeah. teacher out there. Yeah. What about the the school as far as happening out at the school? I know you had China Ram out there. Are you involved yeah. in those type of things as well? No, I wasn't. I was going to, but I didn't know about it or something. Like, sort of missed the... Uh, yeah, I missed it. <laughs> I was going to go on it, but I missed it. So. But uh, what, what's, your th what's your thoughts of what's happening in the in the community in Winnipeg, Raj? Anything interested you in the community? Are you going to take any community interests, uh, you know, with some of the the Big Brother organizations? Do you get involved in things like that at all? Or? Uh, no, not really. Not right no. now? No. Just basically going to play a lot of football and have some fun out there. Yeah. Well, that's good. Well, you fellows came a little short today. And yeah. uh, what was your synopsis of today's football game? Well, we got, well, it's just some bad things that happened to us, like penalties and one fumble. Well, we, we, we'll regroup, though, so. Get it all together yeah, next time. Yeah, against Sisler next Thursday. Okay, thanks for coming up and joining us. We really appreciate it, and uh, see you again. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's the player profile, and we'll be right back with the next game right after this. Professional football.